back to 100%? I think so. He's right. racing hell, so. All right, there you go. He had the dog on the run earlier today. Oh, there, that's for sure then. It's interesting. The city staff just lays in wait. They don't. They don't come on early like we all did when we were there. <laughs> yeah. They're on their on the base right away. Five minutes early, they're just sitting there. I'm just gonna hang until I absolutely have to press play. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's my line. Baskin's right on time, like <laughs> yeah. always. Yeah. Joyce, I had some rum chata the other day. I thought of you. Right, right. You right. what? I had some rum chata the other day at the Nature Center. I thought of you. I can't remember why. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, because you, you drink it every day. Yeah. I lost my <laughs> my canteen. You though. lost oh. your rum chata water bottle? Oh, good heavens. Darn it. It's depressing. Yeah, so. It's been sober ever since. What in the hell? <laughs> oh, she's zooming in. Teresa is zooming. There she is. Hello. 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 Here says 5.30, McKee. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jason, so we're all here. So is Jason here? Right on. He, he's a counselor. He comes on. Look at that. He's he's appearing. All right. Let's start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thomas, could you do the roll call, please? Mayor King. Present. Councilmember at large, Austin. Present. Councilmember Baskin. Present. Obala. Present. Waller. Present. Postma. Present. Oshusta. Present. Fisher. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, item number one is adoption of the agenda with the addition of, resol of a resolution for item number 15 and some consent agenda licenses. I'm looking for a motion. So moved. Paul. Second. Joyce. Thank you. Look at that, Tom. That's a flag. Call their name. Uh, item number. <laughs> no call. Oh. Since Jason's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Okay. Council Member Baskin. Yeah, I'm throwing them in the whole system here. <laughs> Council Member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Fashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number two, motion to approve the minutes from January 19th, 2021. So moved. Thank you, Second. Thank you, Obama. Uh, Tom? Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Fashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Tom. Number three, item number three, there's recognition and awards. There are none. Uh, moving on to item number four, looking for a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. All, thank you. Second. Rebecca, thank you. Tom? Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Under petitions and requests, item number five, uh, a motion to extend the emergency COVID sick leave benefits through March 31st, 2021. Trish? 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we talked about this at the last uh, work well, session. Well, if there are any questions, I can I can answer them. Otherwise, it would be just the extension of the emergency paid sick leave, as it was in um, the program under the federal program until March thirty first, two thousand twenty one, with a retroactivity to January one of twenty twenty one. And Trish, that originally expired December 31st, and Council is going to correct and appreciate uh, Councilperson Waller to bring in that to our attention. I think it's a fair deal for everybody to extend that. So I'm looking for a motion to uh, for number five. So move. Joyce. Second. Rebecca, thank you. Tom. Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Tom. The next several items are going to be the Steve Lang show. I'm going to look forward to that. <laughs> Item number six designating Short Elliot Hendrickson as the consultant for the airport's five year capital improvement plan. Stephen. The worst part is Mitch is not on the call, so <laughs> I can't pawn any. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you. It's all you, baby. Yeah. We. We discussed this item at the last work session, the process of um, requesting statements of qualifications from qualified contractors to help us facilitate our five-year CIP at the Austin Municipal Airport. And through that process, uh, we are recommending that we continue with, our, uh, with SEH. We have worked with them over the past 20 years. They've done a, a good quality job for us at the airport. And again, we would recommend um, continuing our relationship with SEH for this program. Uh, council, questions or a motion? So moved. Jeff, thank you. Second. Second. Rebecca? Tom? Council Member Baskin? Aye. Obala? Aye. Waller? Aye. Postma? Aye. Bashusta? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Council Member Large Austin? Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Item number seven is a resolution approving an airport farm lease with VS Farms LLC. Stephen. We have different farm leases around the community, uh, multiple ones out at the airport and also at the Cook Farm. This one in front of you tonight is at the airport um, for mowing of grass and alfalfa land inside the airport fence. We have worked with VS Farms for many years. They continue to do a good job for us and we would recommend continuing our land lease um, with them for the next three years, 2021, 20, 22 and 23 at the same rates that we had uh, in the previous agreement. We have what we call non-productive land and productive land. Um, what this pertains to is mainly areas right around the taxiway and runway uh, we consider non-productive land as they need to be maintained in grass, but we do have uh, 41 acres of land off to the side of the airport runway that can be maintained a little bit more with uh, alfalfa and a better crop, so we charge a little bit more for that property. Uh, but with this, we'd recommend approval of a farm lease with VS Family Farms for the next three years. Thank you, Mr. Lang. If there are uh, entertaining any questions or a motion, a resolution. So move the resolution. Paul, well, thank you. Second. Rebecca. Tom. Council Member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Tom. Number eight is a resolution looking to approve a contract with Fox Electric Incorporated for the Packer Arena LED light project. Mr. Lang. Uh, Packer Arena is already 18 years old, uh, built back in 2003. And many of the high bay lights that were installed during that construction project were 1,000 watt metal halide fixtures, uh, very high energy consumption type of lighting. And we budgeted $100,000 to upgrade the lighting at Pack Arena, the high bay lighting, and also entry and locker room lighting as well. So we developed uh, specifications for uh, retrofitting or um, installing new LED lighting throughout the facility. And we took bids on that with three local electrical contractors submitting quotes. 
Fox Electric was the low bidder at $41,214 compared with $59,000 from Winkles and $64,000 from Austin Electric. We also, uh, through that bidding process, we, we looked at two different styles of LED bulbs, uh, LED fixtures. You can There's lots of different brands out there, lots of different qualities. Um, the the kind of Letta Lux is, is the low bid numbers and another, um, they're kind of a, a lower range LED fixture provider. Uh, we also bid it out looking at a Lithonia, which is probably a, an upper class of the, of the LED fixtures. And in looking at the cost difference between uh, Letta Lux and, and Lithonia, we would even though it's a, maybe a lesser quality fixture at a, a cost savings of a little over $9,000, we would, we would recommend going with uh, Fox Electric and the Letta Lux product. Um, in addition, we will, uh, after the project is complete, we'll take the information and apply for a rebate through Austin Utilities. We believe that our rebate could be upwards of $10,000 for our uh, electrical rebate. Uh, and then also, when we look at the, the cost, the rebates, uh, we learn, we're looking at some, somewhere around a four-year payback with electrical savings on this project. So all of those things included, we would recommend uh, awarding this project to Fox Electric using the Letalox uh, product. Excellent. Thank you. LEDs are outstanding. Uh, questions, Council? Or looking for a resolution for number eight? Double resolution. That was Paul, thank you, and Mike, who did the second? Yes. Of course he did. <laughs> That's what I heard. Tom? Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Dankert. Number nine is a resolution approving amendment number one to the airport layout plan and exhibit. Exhibit A property map project, Stephen. A lot of this work was spurred on from a previous um, easement agreement that we worked through last summer with the airport armory. Now we need to update all of our documents. And we previously, council previously approved an agreement with SEH in the amount of uh, $130,600 to complete this airport layout plan. Uh, working through the process and working with MnDOT, MnDOT has required uh, SEH to also evaluate our uh, airport VOR. Um, that is a instrument system for the airport. It's actually located about five miles south of the airport. So the city of Austin owns a small parcel of property out in the county, five miles south of the airport. Not many people know about that, but this uh, airport layout plan and, and exhibit A, we need to include that property as part of that document. So in order to add that into the scope of work, <clears throat> SEH has identified about uh, $7,700 in or, uh, to research documents and incorporate everything into the airport layout plan and exhibit A. So we would look at this as amendment number one to the original contract. We anticipate that the FAA will fund this amendment similarly to how they funded the original contract with 90% from um, the FAA and 10% from CARES dollars. We have not gotten a final uh, confirmation on that, but that is in the little bits and pieces we've gotten, we believe this will be the case. If not, we would have to fund it uh, more with local dollars. We typically these grants are funded 90% FAA, 5% state, and 5% local. So there would still be a fairly small uh, impact to the city, but we would recommend awarding this amendment number one. Questions? If not, I'll entertain a resolution for item number nine. Bill moved the resolution. Thank you, Paul. I second. Oh boy, toss oh, up. Oh boy. I'm going with Joyce Pashusta on that time. <laughs> <laughs> You won the lottery tonight. Tom? <laughs> Council Member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Aye. 
Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 10 is a resolution uh, approving the amendment number one to the airport hangar resurfacing project. Mr. Lang? Yes, this is a re roof, re roofing project that we did to our large hangar located at the airport. Our original grant for this project and, and total project cost was $190,000, $190,800. Through the project construction, we identified one change order in the amount of $19,770 for some, some gutters, downspouts, and snow retention system up on the roof so we don't have snow sliding off the roof. Um, in uh, working through the final document costs, incorporating the change order, we have a final construction project cost of $210,570, uh, of which this amendment will uh, account for a grant increase to account for 70% of that cost coming from the state and the remaining 30,000 coming from the city. So uh, tonight we'd recommend approving this grant agreement with the state grant amendment to um, for 70% of the cost of this overall project. Thank you, council. Entertain a motion or, motion or resolution number 10. So moved. moved. Mike. Second. Paul, thank you. Uh, Tom. Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 11 is a resolution looking to approve a construction agreement with the Minnesota DOT for the 28th Street Northeast Bridge. Stephen. <laughs> I believe I just shared my screen so you can kind of see what we're looking at here with the memo. Um, first, I'll, I'll just jump forward to page number two. This, uh, this deals with our, um, our corridor plan for upgrading the bridges through Austin this summer, 28th Street out by Girard and the Country Club and the airport is planned for reconstruction. Um, as part of that process, MnDOT will pay um, up to 7% of the total construction cost for aesthetic improvements on this project. And, and as part of our corridor plan for our bridges, we've identified this bridge as a secondary structure and it would have consistent improvements as other secondary structures throughout the corridor. The 11th drive bridge that was built by the quick trip truck stop, that is a secondary structure. So we anticipate this bridge to look very similar to the 11th drive bridge with uh, upgraded railings, some, some coloring and surfacing to the bridge, some brick and architectural concrete finishes, as well as a, a wider sidewalk with a, a little ribbon, uh, red concrete ribbon that runs along the edge of the sidewalk to kind of give a visual barrier between the edge of the sidewalk and the road. So um, we, with those improvements, we are about $49,000 over the 7% uh, allotment. And in order to cover that original or that extra cost, we've been working with the Hormel Foundation and we have received authorization for a grant to, for, to cover this additional cost. So there will be no cost to the city for these uh, extra improvements. It will be covered by a Hormel Foundation grant, mm. uh, but it would run, all of this would run through the city uh, with this agreement with MnDOT. So with all of that, we would recommend approval of this MnDOT agreement with uh, future funding for it coming from the Hormel Foundation. Okay, and Stephen, on that itemization, it says one six foot shoulder and you look at the, the picture, is there, a, and it also calls for a 12 foot walking sidewalk, but it looks like Councilmember Fisher walking across the bridge has only got a 10 foot walking path there. He's carrying his purse, as you see. <laughs> is that gonna be a 12 foot yes. there? And it then, is going to be a 12 foot that has been adjusted. And then yes. the six, six foot, the six foot, uh, yeah, six foot shoulder. is on six foot shoulder, which would be on the east side of the bridge. The and nine. then it'll be a 12 foot, um, walking path okay. on the west side. And that will connect <clears throat> into the trail that leads to the nature center and also the trail out in the county that continues south, I believe that's called the Shooting Star Trail. Okay, awesome. I thought it was a satchel or a briefcase, Paul. A satchel? It could be a satchel. 
Craig? Uh, Mr. Lang, I think we covered this before, but uh, what it's labeled general elevation, there'll be the um, fencing on that side as well, if I remember correctly. Yes, correct. There, there will be um, a railing on both sides of this oh, bridge. Oh, good. Yes. Great. Yeah, it seems like it should have a railing on the quick trip one too. It to me, right. but I'm that? no engineer, but yeah, <laughs> I know one. I know one on the council. That's all I know. Um, so we're looking for resolution number eleven. So move the resolution. Well, thank you. Second. Rebecca. Tom. Council member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Stephen. You set this one out for a little bit. We're going to call on uh, Kevin here. <laughs> Number 12 is a motion authorizing a two week extension to the ice season at Packer Arena. Kevin. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. As I have brought forward at the work session following the last Council meeting, there's been a request put forward by Austin Youth Hockey Association to extend the ice season at Packer Arena from what would have been February 28th for an end date through March 14th. There are additional related expenses to this, including a temporary dehumidification system, installing that and running it. And it sounds as though at least 70%, likely more of this additional cost will be recouped through rentals. I do note still a hope of the Hockey Association and Mauer County Curling Club who would rent some of that ice to, to have this extension be granted. Uh, I have answers if you've got any questions. Okay, any questions, Council? Nope. I guess not, Mr. Nelson. We're going to look for a motion then for number 12. So moved. Second. Obala? Okay, Tom? Council Member Baskin? Aye. Obala? Aye. Waller? Aye. Postma? Aye. Bashusta? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Council Member at Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number 13, looking for a motion calling for a public hearing on March 15, 2020, at 5 30 p.m. for the establishment of Tax Increment Financing District Number 15 for New Tech Biosciences. So moved. Jeff? Second. Second. Well, thank you. Tom? Council Member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number 14, looking for a motion granting the Planning and Zoning Department the power to contract for the removal of junk and or illegal stored vehicles at the following location 907 3rd Ave Northeast, the Alejo property. So moved. Paul, thank you. Second. Rebecca. Tom. Councilmember Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Bashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Motion passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number 15, the addition is a resolution looking to approve a federal transportation project grant application. Mr. Lang. Each year, there is uh, some federal dollars available uh, for communities in District 6, which is located in Southeast Minnesota. Um, there's about 10 communities of similar size of Austin. They have to be population 5,000 or greater to be able to apply for these uh, federal funds. And this year we have identified uh, a future, this, this would be funding that would be available in 2025. And there's a great deal that's five years out because there's a great deal of planning and paperwork that needs to uh, be prepared prior to being ready to construct a project. Um, such as this. So we have proposed um, a project in 2025 for Oakland Avenue West from <clears throat> Main Street to 12th Street and, and then also one block of Oakland Avenue East from Main Street to 1st Street right by the fire station. Um, this roadway was uh, originally built in 1979 and we did a rehab project on it in 2002 um, and we are not only experiencing some, some surfacing issues, but there are also some underground infrastructure issues related to water main and sanitary sewer that would also uh, spur along this project. So we feel that it is a, a good project uh, that would meet a lot of the federal requirements and would, be, uh, would meet the competitive nature of other projects proposed by other communities. And 
we have identified a, a total cost of the project of $3.6 million. And shown in the, the memo is 80%, 20% split. The, the grants are maxed out at 80% of the total cost. Um, but in looking at some documentation today, there is only $2.1 million available in the federal grant. So we'd actually change that a little bit. Uh, our request is looking at more of a 60-40 split, 60% federal grant request and 40% state aid, um, which comes to about 2.1 million in uh, federal request and 1.6 million in state aid request. So we also above and beyond that anticipate about a half a million dollars in water and sanitary sewer utility repairs and that 1.5 million dollars of state aid we would likely assess these property owners in 2025 as part of our uh, normal assessment program so part of those state aid dollars could be offset with assessments to adjacent property owners so that is the the scope of the project that we would put together for our grant agreement and we need a council resolution to support the project as part of the grant application so we would request approval of this project and a resolution to move this forward for a federal grant application. So we're looking for a resolution for number 15. If there are any more questions. So move the resolution. Jeff, thank you. Second. Rebecca, Tom. Council member Baskin. Aye. Obala. Aye. Waller. Aye. Postma. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, anything else on your mind you want to talk about? Do you get enough time to be with us? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, good until the next uh, work session. <laughs> Roger. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> citizens addressing council. Any citizens wishing to address the council? Hearing none, moving on to the honorary council member, we have Teresa Lugo on Zoom. It's her second meeting. Teresa, any insights or knowledge you've gained in the last 25 minutes that you want to share with us? No, Your Honor. Just thank you for allowing me to be part of this. You bet. Thank you. Uh, reports, recommendations, Craig? Uh, let's see. The only thing I have to of note is the... DCA continues to help Mauer County on the business assistance program. They have till the 15th of next month for those impacted by Executive Order 20-99 and uh, encourage those businesses to uh, take advantage of that uh, application. They can receive up to $25,000 for losses they've sustained because of dealing with COVID. So certainly want to make sure all businesses know about that. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. No other department heads have anything? No, not to my knowledge. Right. Uh, council comments. Let's uh, start with Mr. Baskin. Jason, do you have anything? Only thing I'd say is the new microphones sound great. So thank you to Ann and Tom and everybody that put that together. That's great. Yep, I agree. All right. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to really upset the apple cart. <laughs> Rebecca? I have nothing, Your Honor. Okay. Obala? <laughs> Any comments? Oh, I thought I was going to go. Oh, well, I, I don't have uh, a lot, Your Honor. I just did my last um, orientation last week. And is it this week? Yeah, this week with, uh, with, the, with the chief and also the fire department. So it went really good. good. I think we need to recruit more people to join our uh, fire department. So that's one thing I learned. See if you can't get some, drum up some business for them, that'd be excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Jeffrey? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. You, Paul? Nothing here. Michael? Uh, quick, exciting news from the Austin HRA. Um, they have been funded for a new CHIP 2 program, which if you're familiar with the original CHIP program, it was $10,000 available to make home repairs like furnaces and things um, based on certain income levels. This new program is, like most sequels, bigger and better. And so now um, there is availability to still income there are still income restrictions, but they are much broader. So a family of three can make up to, I think it was $85,000 and qualify. So it's, it's going to open it up to more citizens. And the bigger thing is you can now get up to $25,000 uh, to do remodeling and more general home repairs, remodeling updates um, at a 2% loan rate over 10 years. So it's 
pretty exciting and we're getting the word out and uh, hope to see a lot of folks keep our local contractors busy this summer. And there's income limits on that? Yep, Once. yep. So between 65 and 85,000, depending on the size of the family. So it's much higher than the income limits for the CHIP 1 program. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Well, that about does it then. We got everybody, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I do have something. Okay, tonight. Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> and it's regarding the library, your favorite. So oh, sweet. I must say. Can't wait. Yes. Uh, the Human Rights Commission and the library have merged their social justice book clubs. And the next meeting is on February 18th at 6 o'clock. The book is An Indigenous People's History of the United States. And if anyone is interested in joining, they can call or email the library. Thank you, Joyce. Mm -hmm. Julie, I'm assuming that all that she said was accurate. <laughs> Never quite know. Oh, thumbs up. There you go. Thank you. Thumbs up. Uh, uh, if that's everything, we'll take a five minute, we'll adjourn and then take a five minute break. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Oh, second. Paul, Jeff, thank you. Uh, Tom? Aye. Obala? Aye. Waller? Aye. Postma? Aye. Pashusta? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin? Aye. Motion passed to 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll adjourn and we'll meet back for the work session in five minutes. Oh. Don't run away. Who wanna... I don't remember my water bottle for these meetings. It's a rookie movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Take a picture. Is there, uh, yep. Oh, do you see? Oh. He's, he ran away. Greg, there's actually eight seats he, needed. He I'm just going to slide these tables in. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to tell the council to. And the, the